Hello everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to make NPCs climb ladders, jump over gaps, go into vehicle seats, and transform locations. So if you're interested in this, stay tuned because this uses the new pathfinding links, which was released 5 hours ago. So if you're interested in learning something new, this is the video for you. So click on base plate, we don't need the spawn location. First, go to File, Studio Settings. Now make sure you're updated to the latest Roblox Studio so you have pathfinding links. And um, yeah, so we can get started right away. So click Part. This will be our start location. Anchor it. And then duplicate it. Now this will be our finish location. Now duplicate this again, but put, the, put it back to smooth plastic, transparency is 0.5, and then this will be named just part, attachment, um, and then we can duplicate this again, okay, and now we can put in our NPC, so click on plugins, build rig, block rig, R15, Okay, I guess right here. Click on service, script service, insert a script. We're going to make a simple path. So local path equals game get service pathfinding service. Create path. And, um, and then path compute a sync. Workspace start position, workspace finish position, local waypoints, path get waypoints, for IV and peers, waypoints do, workspace dummy humanoid move, um, wait, wait, humanoid V position, okay, yeah. Workspace dummy humanoid. Move to finish to wait. And go inside your dummy, make sure everything's unanchored. And now, um, so now we'll go to the start, to the destination. But what happens if you want it to like jump over an obstacle? So let's say I insert a part and make this big anchor it and then make another part. Put it right here. Let's say the start was here and the end was here and the NPC is here. Well, if I test this right now, the NPC, yeah, it won't get to its destination. But that's where pathfinding links come in. So insert pathfinding link insert inside workspace. Attachment zero is this one right here. Attachment one is here, right here. And this will be the jump label. As you can see, it's enabled in both directions. So, and then if the label is equal to jump, then workspace dummy humanoid jump equals true. So now if I do this, it will jump and it will get to its destination. So what's happening here is every waypoint has a label. So, once it touches the first pathfinding link part, it, it, it has a jump label and it says the weight label is jump. So that's why it fired the code over here. What happens if you want to transform its location instead? Well, you can just do set primary part C frame and then workspace destination, I mean finish C frame. But it won't go to the finish at first. It will go to the last pathfinding link part and then to its destination. So that's how you make it teleport basically. And um, how about if you want it to go on a vehicle seat instead. So insert vehicle seat, put attachment here. Um, the pathfinding link attachment is zero, is this attachment. Oh, and by the way, if you go to file studio settings, you can show nav navigation mesh 
which basically um so wait a minute yeah it shows these two circles it's not very visible but it's around these attachments so wait no i think it's because so i do try you see two circles so if one of these circles are red, that means the attachment is in place correctly. So you have to place it somewhere where it, the circle is green, so basically. So make sure both circles are green. Now you can go back to studio settings and disable this. And you can also disable enable the orange UI by clicking on toggling show pathfinding links. I'm going to keep this on. So back to the vehicle seat, you want to add a linear velocity. Uh, attachment 0 is the vehicle seat's attachment and then the velocity is 10 so it goes that way and then hmm, oh that max force 100,000 and enabled equals false so instead the label is going to be sit so if the label is equal to sit then workspace dummy sit equals true Humanoid set equals true. And then workspace vehicle seat, linear velocity, enabled equals true. Task weight um, free. And then the sit equals false. So now if you test this, it goes. Oh, these are tank collide. Make, sh make sure nothing's blocking the way. It goes. And then it gets up, goes to the pathfinding link, and there. So that's how you make it sit in vehicle seats. So, yeah, it can sit in vehicle seats, it can do anything. So, but how about if you want to climb ladders? Well, this attachment will be back to this, so right here. And make the. So now you want to scale this up. So you want to get it over here, right? So you can delete this. So just you just need to put the pathfinding link like this. And then you want to build a ladder, right? To the part. So duplicate. Now if I test it. Oh my. I forgot to anchor all these. Okay, anchor it. So now it will climb the... Oh, I forgot to dis delete this code. Okay, just... Yeah, we're not using the sit anymore. Okay, so now it will climb the ladder. And yeah. So that's the basics. So what does is bidirectional mean? Well, if you toggle this off, the arrow changes. As you can see, you can't really see, but. So that means only this pathfinding link will be enabled. So if I go back to my SIP script, so if I. So like this, and then I put the code again, I click run, it, it will be normal, but nothing happens so let's test this again oh yeah can collide it's true so it, it works as intended but if i disable this it will only work for this so the late v the sit label will only fire for this part so the sit label will never fire well actually it does But if I if I change these the opposite way, so nothing will happen because it's. But if I enable this, it will go to this part, as you can see. But if I don't, then it will go to this part at first. I think, I think that's what it means. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and yeah, see ya.